I'm going to talk about the Treaty Clause, which gives the President the power to make treaties by and with the advice and consent of a supermajority of the Senate. One interesting fact is that the original Articles of Confederation put the treaty-making power exclusively in the Senate. That's probably why, when it was given to the executive, the Senate was given a supermajority role of giving advice and consent. However, it is advice and consent only that is the role of the Senate, not, as the popular press generally reports, ratification. It is the executive who ratifies the treaty at the end of the advice and consent process. Secondly, and interesting with respect to advice and consent, is that although the Senate advice and consent is required for the making of treaties, it is not at all required for the termination of treaties. Finally, there is this instrument called an executive agreement, which the court has interpreted to be a functional equivalent of a treaty. The executive agreement is nowhere mentioned in the Constitution, and it can be carried out exclusively by the President or by the President together with the House and Senate by a simple majority vote or resolution. Of course the House loves this because they get into the business of international lawmaking.